Welcome. We're glad that you have joined us for this Pentecost Sunday, and we pray that your spirit would be enriched and grow in Christ Jesus. We do pray for you, and in this short broadcast, we will offer prayers for all those that are struggling with all kinds of issues, because we believe prayer changes things. On this Pentecost Sunday, we say happy birthday to the church. And we also recognize that in this day, many gifts were given to the church. And so we will talk about these for for just a few moments today. But let us begin with our call to worship. Come, Holy Spirit, ignite our hearts with joy and confidence. For God has done wondrous things for us. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with the power of the rushing wind, that we may faithfully serve you in all that we do. For Christ has called each of us and blessed us. Come, Holy Spirit, be with us today. Help us to boldly proclaim, Christ has risen. Christ has risen. Amen. Let us pray. God of wind and fire, embolden us this day to receive your power. Help us to proclaim the wondrous things that you have done and continue to do in our lives. Give us strength and courage to share the good news of your love and your presence. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Acts, the second chapter says, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them the ability Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and were bewildered, because each one heard the disciples speaking in the native language of the crowd. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? We hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. And they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? In Corinthians, Paul tells us that he wants to talk to us about spiritual gifts. Too many times we think of gifts as things that we receive and we get to unwrap and, and take out and, and be surprised by them sometimes. Or other times we're a little disappointed and we're thinking, okay, I can give this to uncle so-and-so or aunt so-and-so. Or I'll just take it down to the, well, I'll just take it down to the goodwill and let them deal with it. But Paul wanted us to understand these are not gifts that you give away. These are not gifts that, that come with an expiration date or can be taken back. These are gifts that are given to each individual by God. Now, these are not our strengths. Someone who sings, that's a gift that's given to them to minister. But it is not a gift of the Holy Spirit in the sense that it is a gift given by God. The gifts that are given by God are the ones that, well, they are literally God used. You don't, there is no other way to say this than to say that God gives it to us and gives it to us without merit, without, without any, well, we got one here, one over there, let's give them this one. These are added to our, these are added benefits of our faith. And we have to see that, but then we also have to respond. We have too many pew sitters in church today because they don't think they have any gifts or they have never developed the gift that God has given them. 
Too many times we say to ourselves, well, we'll leave it to somebody else. Or it's, it's Joe's problem. Or it's pastor's problem. Or it's pastor. He's the one. Didn't he go to seminary so he should have all these gifts? That is not the case. In fact, I find for, for even in my life, I have just a limited amount of gifts. Heck, I have a limited amount of patience sometimes. But what we do see here is that we have to understand that these gifts are given to each individual to build the body of Christ up. But not only to build the community up, but to build those who are outside our community so that they can see the power and the faith that is growing within us. Too many times we just want to use it for church, our little churchy club. And we don't ever think about using it in the world around us. God wants us to be active in the world. And by being active in the world, he has given us gifts to use in the world. There are administrators. There are teachers. There are helpers. There are mercy givers. There are those that can talk, can talk about and see an element of the future. Not necessarily predicting what it will be, but an element of the future as we look to the look well like coming out of this pandemic what is the church going to look like there are individuals that are giving us a glimpse of that and then there are individuals that well they can move us forward through their ability to share the good news all of these things are god given they are not ours to profit on or to write a book and say look what god has done for me these need to be gifts that have been given and received in humility. And then they have to be used in service to the world, not self-serving. Too many times we want to be self-serving because it's, well, it makes me look good, makes me to be better than what, well, than what I am. Too many times... We think these gifts are activated to be used at our beck and call, but they are activated by the power and the love and the grace of God for a given situation. We cannot be selfish with these gifts. I believe that too many times the church has abandoned the gifts because, well, it's easier to find somebody who can do it better than me. Well, the reason God has given each and every person a gift is so that they can grow spiritually, grow stronger in their faith, can walk more boldly in the good news of Jesus Christ instead of, well, the only thing I can do is hold this chair or this pew down so it don't float off. Well, that's what they make screws for and that's what glue is used for, not humans. Today, when we talk about the gifts of the Spirit, while there are a variety of places that tell us where we can find them, Paul is very much in tune to these gifts. And he's constantly calling on the church to use them. And so today, as we struggle to find a place of unity, to find a community in which we could live, I think the church is struggling also to find their gifts to be used for God. I hope today that you will take the time to read the 12th chapter of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians and ask God, what gifts have I been given that I'm not using for you, Lord? And then watch God open the floodgates of heaven. Amen. Pray for the needs of the people and the needs and the safety of our community. Let us pray. Dear God, we walk in the light of Christ. We have fellowship with one another. When we confess our sins, the one who is faithful and just forgives our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. For in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God has showed mercy upon the entire world. Now let us pray for those who are hungry. Let us pray for those who are homeless. Let us pray for those who struggle financially. 
Lord, we pray for those who need a spiritual touch from you. And Lord, we pray for those who need a physical touch from you. Lord, we pray for those who have broken relationships. And Lord, we pray for all those who are broken in spirit. We pray for those who struggle with all kinds of addictions, Lord. And for those who need direction in their lives. And as always, we ask forgiveness for your broken church and pray for its healing. And Lord, for all unspoken needs, the cries of our hearts, those that we know we need and those that we will need this coming week. Generous and surprising God, when we thought that death had claimed you, your only son, you amazed us with the resurrection. We lay our very lives at your feet, O oh God, knowing that you will use us to proclaim and embody the good news. Amen. Follow along as I read a responsive reading of the Lord's Prayer. O oh God, through Jesus' sacrifice, you have restored us as your forgiven children. In his name we pray, our Father, who art in heaven. Help us to know you through your inspired word and to live by it as children in your family. Hallowed be thy name. Give us your Holy Spirit to rule in our hearts and use us to extend your kingdom of grace to others. Thy kingdom come. Make us zealous to carry out your will as gladly as the angels do and to conform our will to yours thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven merciful lord since you are the provider of all things necessary for our bodies fill us with trust give us this day our daily bread continue to erase our sins and help us to gladly to forgive and to do good to those who wrong us. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. We know the devil seeks to destroy our souls, and the world lures us to ruin by appealing to the desires of our flesh. Guard us from the poison of misbelief and the trap of unrepented sin. And lead us not into temptation. Keep safe our bodies and our souls, our property, our honor, and above all, send the Holy Spirit to preserve our faith in Christ, who leads to everlasting life. But deliver us from evil. For all these petitions, we look to you as King of kings and Lord of your church. For thine is the kingdom. You alone hold the power to grant our requests and the power. We worship you from whom all blessings flow and the glory forever and ever. Relying on Jesus, who canceled our sins and made us acceptable in your sight, we pray with confidence. Amen. And so be it. God bless you.